In this video, I'm going to be talking about film studio and distributor Full Moon, also known as Full Moon Entertainment Productions, Features, Pictures, Studios. Maybe the first time I ever heard of Full Moon was only a few years ago. I was at a movie store, well it was a movie game and bookstore called Second and Charles. They sell a bunch of used books and music and movies. And I was in there with my friend and I was telling her like, I just want to watch something that's like really bad, you know, like just something real cheesy. And this guy overheard and he came up to me and handed me demonic toys and he was like, I heard what you said and you should watch this, it's by Full Moon, they also did Puppet Master. I didn't know what Full Moon was or what Puppet Master was, but it all sounded cool, right? So I bought Demonic Toys and I took it home and I watched it and I was actually really surprised at how good it was despite like the cheesiness factor. It was itself also a good movie. And I've seen a handful of Full Moon films, but recently I have fallen in love with Baby Oopsie and decided to deep dive like who is Full Moon. I'm fairly new to trying to understand the studio in its full context, but from dwelling in the horror spaces online, everyone seems to know something about Full Moon and have an opinion about Full Moon, and it gets talked about like it's its own genre. I'm planning to explore the Full Moon library a bit deeper, but I thought before I do that, why not learn about Full Moon and make a video as I do so. Full Moon has been known by many names. Full Moon Features, Full Moon Entertainment, Full Moon Studios, Full Moon Pictures, Full Moon Productions. They have changed their name constantly over the years. Full Moon was founded by producer and director Charles Band. Wikipedia says it was founded in 1988. Charles Band said in an interview I read that it was founded in 1989, whatever, late 80s. Charles Band is still the leader of this company to this very day. Full Moon is a motion picture production and distribution company. So that means that they make their own original features and they also get rights. I don't, look, I don't know how this movie business, how the business side of all this works, but as a distributor, they'll get rights to certain pre-existing films and put them out. And as Charles Band put it in an interview that I will link below, we license hundreds of rare and classic genre films from all over the world, as well as producing our own. And Full Moon is an American company and they are headquartered in Los Angeles. I just wanna take a moment right here and say that all of my information was gathered from the internet. Charles Band has put out a book on himself, but I did not read that book. So in founding Full Moon, Charles Band's goal was to create low budget horror, sci-fi, and fantasy films while maintaining a high budget look. Charles Band is really inspired by exploitation cinema and just that B-movie vibe. That is what he likes and that's what he wants to capitalize on. Full Moon's first release was Puppet Master in 1989 and as you probably know, it was iconic. According to Band, Puppet Master franchise is still the most successful direct-to-video franchise ever. Full Moon has a reputation of making cheesy, weird, off-the-wall, bizarre, just intentionally bad movies. They're also known for implementing practical effects a lot. Notable titles from Full Moon include Pit and the Pendulum, Subspecies, Doll Man, Demonic Toys, Castle Freak, Evil Bong, Ginger Dead Man, Head of the Family, and many more. There's approximately 150 original titles listed on the Wikipedia page, and that is not counting all the sub-labels. In its beginnings, Full Moon was partnered with Paramount and Pioneer, and they had a deal with Paramount to create direct to video releases for rental stores. So back in the 90s, these full moon releases were sold on VHS to rental stores and their prices were like $100. And direct to video is primarily what full moon has dealt in 
for its entire existence. The Wikipedia article on Full Moon is a mess. But once you do enough reading around online, it is easy to see that Charles Band is this hustling, scrambling businessman with a sense of urgency. He's constantly rebranding, creating offshoots, sub labels. He is just always trying to churn out something new, like as quickly as possible. It's like he's trying to constantly innovate. It's a lot to keep up with. Some of the sub labels of Full Moon include Torchlight Entertainment and Moonbeam Entertainment, both which are more sci-fi related. They've got Surrender Cinema, which is more erotica. Apparently, Charles Band even has a podcast now called Full Moon Freak Show. He is just a hustler. Now, obviously, Charles Band is the main character here. What I've read in passing, you know, woven into movie reviews and things of that nature, is that some people don't like him. I kind of wanted to get a little idea about why. I asked you guys on my community tab and I also asked people on Instagram, like, what do y'all know about Full Moon? And nobody had anything to say about Charles himself. So I did find a little bit of tea for you. Wikipedia says that the director of Puppet Master, David Schmoller, had beef with Charles Band. He said that Charles owed him money and that Charles didn't want David to be on the director's commentary for the release of Puppet Master. David Schmoller also directed Tourist Trap and I found some more beef in a blog post which I will link below. But apparently Tourist Trap was released, I think it was on Blu-ray maybe, by Full Moon in 2014 and David Schmoller was like, um, five minutes are missing from this movie. And apparently Full Moon was like, no, no, it's the full thing. And Dave was like, uh, no, five minutes are cut. There are some other allegations in that very blog post, but I won't get into them here because it is alleged, but it's worth a read, especially to understand why some people say they don't like Charles. But moving on from the gossip, let's talk a little bit more about cut films. I recently watched Jalo in Venice on Tubi. It was Full Moon's version. Full Moon put it onto Tubi, or this is Full Moon's, I don't know. I don't know how this works, but it had the Full Moon thing on there when you clicked on it. It was renamed Gore in Venice, and 15 minutes were cut from this movie. So I don't know if Full Moon does this a lot and why are they trying, I mean, they cut out the bad stuff. So are they trying to make themselves a little more um, palatable with the films they distribute or, you know, I'm not sure what goes into that, but I tried to search, does Full Moon cut their releases? Like does Full Moon cut the films they distribute? And I couldn't really find anything on that. So yeah, Full Moon makes bad, movies. Primarily horror, sci-fi, and fantasy for your shallow entertainment. They're still going strong today, coming out with titles such as Attack of the 50 Foot Cam Girl. There may be some beef and some scandal here and there, but it seems like there are some true gems in this library, and I personally am thankful for this label. Full Moon also has a streaming service which looks awesome. And from what I gather, they heavily support physical media. So I think they put all their originals out in physical form. They also have a YouTube channel where you can watch a lot of their releases. And many of their films can be found on Tubi. Now, before I wrap this up, I just wanted to share a few random things that I found in my research. First of all, Charles Band has a son named Alex Band. And you may know him because he's a musician. He was in this band called The Calling from the early 2000s. And they have this song called Wherever You Will Go. You might remember it. If I could, then I would. I'd go wherever you will go. You remember? So small world. Also, moving on, I learned what a laser disc, what a laser disc is. It was like a giant DVD. How come no one has ever mentioned this before? That is crazy looking. Apparently it's like really technologically advanced. A laser disc. What? Did any of y'all watch things on a laser disc? Oh yeah. One other thing I wanted to find out during my research 
was okay like when I watched baby oopsie at the end of the credits there was like a big number that came on screen it was like number 300 and something I don't know and I was like do they number their releases or something what significance does that number have I couldn't find anything do y'all know now that is all I have to say about full moon they've just been churning them out for 30 years real hard I think these a lot of these films look awesome let me know what your favorite full moon original was and hopefully i can check it out i might even try out their streaming service one day and that is it ciao for now